Hi, and welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And today, this podcast episode is airing Monday, March 13th. And today is kind of fun. It's my daughter's birthday. Yay! Yeah, so exciting. (laughs) And we're just happy to be here. And it's March. And we're especially excited to be here because we can finally share Bountiful Blooms on the podcast. Mom did a video sharing all about the fabrics and everything up close, and I wasn't able to be there. So this is fun for me to be here today with Bountiful Blooms quilts on the wall and all the fun stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear what you have to say about it uh, yeah. in a little bit because, yeah, we usually do those videos together, and so this will be really good. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to start off? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm actually going to start off with our little message about Cozy Earth. They are again sponsoring this (laughs) podcast. We really appreciate them. And I actually just got on their website today and they have lots of new products for spring. There are hoodies, men and women pullovers and joggers and even scrunchies and quilted shams and scrunchies. So so many things, but the sheets still my favorite, favorite product that I have from them. And the sheets are made from ultra soft viscose from bamboo. I really love the way they feel. We've had them now during hot weather and cold weather and have loved them during both seasons. They seem to be really, especially temperature regulating for me. And I am usually really hot when I sleep. So it's Same here. been really good. So yeah, love Cozy Earth. And you can get 35% off site-wide with the code AQUILTINGLIFE. Okay, and then I guess I'm going to keep going because yeah. it's my turn for quilts. It is mom's turns for quilts, and they are so adorable, so I will let you so, take it away. I actually have quite a few of them that you can see today on the wall is Flower Shop, and there is also a Flower Shop Mini I actually have three of my patterns this time that have the minis included. And I just thought that would be just, I don't know, really helpful to have. Uh, and maybe I was it was going to be less work for me than to, to have the mini to ship. And the, But anyway, I love having both versions. The flower blocks in the larger quilt are bigger than the flower blocks in the mini. Really, really loved using our low volume prints for backgrounds for this quilt. And just, it, I don't know. I don't know if I can have a favorite. This might be one of my favorites. But also on the table, we have the updated and revised Maple Sky. It's like I actually changed the name because I made so many changes. It's Maple Sky Remix. And there is also a mini for it included with the pattern. And this is actually a design that I've had for years, but I made a few changes to the block, to the sashing. And then again, these patterns used to be separate, the mini and the larger quilt, and I put them together. I love that you put them together. I I love that option. I'm really happy about it, yeah. And everybody wants to get more value for what they're buying these days. And so I think multiple sizes are are really nice. Also on the table, I have my Aubrey tote and love, love, love. I use soft and stable for it. And uh, this is also a pattern that I've had for a little while. It has the template included that you can use for the tumblers. And this is a charm pack friendly project. I should mention also that the quilt on the wall is a layer cake quilt and then the maple sky is made with fat quarters and yeah we have a bundle on the table too that maybe (laughs) you can use when you are talking about it and also behind chelsea is summer sky too i should mention that let me just move for you all yeah Love, love love that mom's just doing all the quilts today yep next week the next episode they will be Chelsea's quilts because you have one back and two at the quilter, right? One back, two at the quilter. Okay. Just started cutting out two more. Okay. And they're my last ones. Awesome. <laughs> I cannot even tell you all how quickly they're going together. It And it took me way too long to make them, but they're adorable. Oh, so They are really cute. So pretty. Yeah. 
So, and we will also have individual videos about all of our quilts. Yeah. I do have to say something. I talk about this all the time, but mom has such a way with using the low volumes in her blocks. And I love it. I love it. I don't know why it freaks me out sometimes to use low volumes in the blocks, but you do it so well and it's so pretty. I love that each flower has like its own little low volume background. Oh, thank you. And this is actually one of my favorites. They're both Maple Sky and the flower Thank quilt you. are two of my favorite ones. Something I did with Maple Sky on the mini, I used low volumes just with the larger leaves. Yeah, I noticed that. And just the tone on tone with the smaller blocks. Smaller, because I don't like things too busy. But with the larger quilt, all of the large leaves have low volume backgrounds. Yeah, but it doesn't I also, look too busy. I also did mix in some with the smaller leaves. So a block like this block has four small leaves and two of them have low volume backgrounds and two of them have tone on tone. Yeah. So I, I, and I felt it wasn't too busy. So that, you know, and I also used for this quilt and this one, since I used so many low volume backgrounds, I went with a tone on tone for the sashi. Yeah. I think I, I have kind of like a threshold where it's busy or too busy or, or just right, you know, so. Yeah. Um, well, I will adjust. That's why I like that in the sashing you did the tone on tone, though, is it creates enough separation Yeah, from the blocks. Yeah. But then, like, in the quilt behind you, I used a low volume for the sashing because I used the tone on tone in the blocks. So, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say the only new quilt of yours from this collection that's not out here, we just had the video released last Thursday. Right. Right, the and that's spools. the happy spools. Oh, yeah. that's the one that's missing. That's the one that's missing. People yeah. love that one. Yeah, and it has a mini too. Okay, I think Billy has. Well, why not? Listener. Let's just do all the minis. <laughs> all the Every single one, right? <gasps> yeah, I have a couple things. Um, I have a. Li it's it's actually not a quilt, so I don't have a picture for those watching today. But it was a great email with a quote, and so that. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and read that. This was sent to my mom. It says, Hi, Sherry. I still enjoy your podcast so much. I wanted to share with you a wonderful comment I received from an old high school friend of mine. You and Ch Chelsea recently said to up our game and increase our accuracy to join a quilt along. Uh, or I think she meant like that will help you, right. you know, increase accuracy is by joining a quilt along. So she said, I took that to heart and have been doing the Bliss Quilt along with your Happy Days line of fabric. I have done four blocks and each one is getting better. I posted my four blocks on Facebook and Mick commented that I was becoming an expert. I told him that photos hide a lot of little mistakes. This was his comment. I thought your listeners would like to hear this as much as I did. And the quote is, uh, Teresa, there are no mistakes, just unplanned steps and actions. Unplanned steps or actions are unique. Uniqueness is divine. Uniqueness is what makes your quilt perfect. So, and she said, that. I hope this encourages everyone as much as it did with me. Keep up the great work. And your, uh, you and your daughter and Billy are doing a great thing for the quilting community. Yeah, I I'll, love that. <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat it one more time. Yeah. So there are no mistakes, just unplanned steps and actions. Unplanned steps and actions are unique. Uniqueness is divine. Uniqueness is what makes your quilt perfect. Yeah. I Stop it. That. I'm going to cry. <laughs> this is the type of support we all need in our lives. Yes. What? <laughs> that is incredible. Isn't that so nice? I know. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you can take can that. Can I frame it? Like, <laughs> Make a printable. Yeah, yeah. Make a printable. We'll have to attribute it to the oh original my, well, author. Yeah, yeah. Of course course all, all we have is that it's from mick so yeah i guess we could probably <laughs> find it on the facebook group maybe well i don't know i think she might have just oh maybe posted on her own personal her own facebook personal. that's right and yeah. so if i an old high school friend right comments that's true. That, you know that's what i mean true. Yeah. Mick, so. you're a genius <laughs> so yeah i think that, that you can and you could take that for probably any piece of art not just in quilting you know right that everything's right. unique yeah oh my goodness so yeah that, that was a great Thank you for sharing that. Great quote. And then w I also wanted to share with you guys a little feedback and from someone, you know, and, and it's just sort of random. I saw it on the comments here as we were, as I was just 
getting ready for the podcast today. And so it's from it's from Vicky who has quilted some of my mom's quilts. Oh, Vicky. Yeah. <laughs> that Vicky. <laughs> yeah. Lives right here in town. So she said, Hey girls, in the pet and this is referring to the last episode when you guys were talking about pressing seams. And I think mom mentioned that in the past one of the things was to not press them open. I believe. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she says, hey girls, in the past, pressing seams open was probably discouraged because if you had your finished top quilted in the ditch, the quilting was going between the fabrics in the open seam allowance. In other words, into nothing but threads, which could potentially weaken the seams. If your quilt is, is being stitched in the ditch, you always press to the side to catch fabric. Just one of many long arm quilting rules. So I think that was I mentioned that to you before, Mom, and a little feedback, and I don't know if you have any follow-up from that. Yeah, I thought that was super interesting. I feel like quilting in the ditch was really, really popular when I started quilting, and maybe a little bit less so now. I I know that Val sometimes will do things in the ditch, but it seems like then she's always got something close to it that's not quilted in the ditch, so... But I feel like back in the day, that was a really common thing would be to just quilt an entire quilt in the ditch because especially if you're quilting your own quilt, it was an easy way for you to kind of hide your imperfections by quilting it that way. And you had something to follow. And if you messed up a little bit, it didn't really show. So yeah, yeah that, that really made a lot of sense. So thank you, Vicki. <laughs> And then did you have something to share, Mom, with that? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll let you do that now, and then I'll finish up. So this is by Miori, and this actually, it's a great storage container. I, we've seen them at Quilt Market before. They yeah. have small ones, big ones. So to say I recognized it. I love this one because there's a pocket inside, but also it it just folds. Oh flat so yeah so if you're traveling it to a quilt event or something yeah you can have it in your suitcase flat and you can have it on the table and with the little pocket that's in here you could have rulers standing up or anything and have stuff I just or you could even just have it on the floor with fabric in it but anyway I just want to share these we'll put a link to them but I actually ordered these, two of these, for my sewing room closet, and I love it. So, really fun designs and colors available. Yeah, that's so nice. Yeah, so that was my new find of the week. I love that. I want, actually, some of those for just my kids' closets. Yeah. That's actually perfect. Yeah. Also, I have to share... Can I share two podcast recommendations? <laughs> two episodes. Go right ahead. I gave these both hey, to go Chelsea. Go ahead. I gave these both to Chelsea already, but one of them is from Greg McEwen, and we will link the episode in the description. But it was about clearing the mental clutter, and it just resonated so well with me. And he gives you a technique at the end of four simple th- steps to do. And he challenges you to do it for two weeks, and I've been doing it. It's only been a couple days, but it's been so helpful. And it's really interesting, too, because the challenge that he gives is is also really a takeoff on many of you have heard of The Artist's Way by Julia. I used to say Cameron, but I just heard her on a podcast, and she pronounced her last name Cameron. But she wrote this book, The Artist's Way, I think it's been 30 years and it has influenced artists in all different genres. And one of the things that she proposes is the morning pages, which is really similar to the first thing that Greg McEwen tells you to do in clearing the mental clutter. But I I heard this interview with her. She was actually on the Rachel Hollis podcast recently, and it was just fascinating to hear her. She's just this, this sweet little lady. She's just still living the creative life. And she also has a recent book out called Writing for Life that kind of takes her whole idea that she's been teaching for decades and just gives you even more information. So those are two creative, creativity, creative mental clarity podcasts that I just really enjoyed recently. So to, to clarify, the first one was 
from Greg McCune's podcast. Right. And what's the name of his podcast again? I think it's it's he's changed the name, but I think it's the Essentialism Podcast. Okay. Or, so, but I'll get that link. So there's so for that podcast there's an episode that we'll link and then the other one is from the rachel hollis podcast right okay. and it was her interview with julia cameron with julia cameron yeah. okay and yeah those will be linked in the yeah. show notes then yeah both really good uh, the greg McEwen one is only 22 minutes long total so it's a quick listen the other one is about an hour i think there's probably about 10 or 15 minutes of rachel in the beginning inter uh, introducing julia and her experience with her book the artist's way and then the interview comes on and that's really really very interesting awesome okay well i'll finish up my segment and then we'll jump into our topics today i did need to do a little housekeeping i guess we had a slight bot attack on the <laughs> youtube channel on our last epi- actually no it was on the it was the bountiful blooms fabric yes video oh. So on that video in the comments, we appreciate everyone for watching and all the nice comments that um, were put on there and replied to, but that there was what appeared to be a bot that took our a Quilting Life logo. So when I respond from the Quilting Life channel, it has our little logo there, you know, we may say thank you or, or respond to a question or whatnot. Something took our logo and then started replying to it was roughly around 60, 70 comments, I believe, oh and said, congratulations, you won a free package, and then had like a bunch of thumbs up emojis, and and it wasn't from us, it was, it was some bot, and if you look next to the comment, it had our logo, but then it said at, and it was like a bunch of numbers and letters, so HXJ2242, something like that. I don't re- recall exactly what it was, I've had them all removed, so just in future reference if you ever get a comment replied to on our youtube channel that says you've won something and you see our logo just make sure you check next to the actual logo if it's us it will say at a quilting life and then you know or at sherry mcconnell or at chelsea strat yeah Yeah, with your personal youtube accounts sure right so just double check that and then you'll know if it's legitimate also we would 100% 100% announce any type of giveaway prior to yeah, that right. happening, either yeah. on the podcast or a specific, specific video, if that was to happen. So we apologize. I know my mom got some emails. Hey, did I win something for real? You know, and and totally understandable because they it looked real. They took our logo. Yeah. 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 And so just diving in a little deeper. But so we do apologize for that. I had them all removed, reported the account to uh, YouTube and. Hopefully that doesn't happen again, but it, it quite possibly could. Some people, I guess that's their hobby or whatever yeah. <laughs> to jump on and do stuff like that. Yeah. So, but I wanted to just sort of, I guess, let everyone know, yes, we were, we were aware of it. We apologize, but there's nothing we could really do about it. And, yeah. Since you mentioned that, let me just mention really quickly too. We had a few people in our Sherry and Chelsea Facebook group, which now is over 11,000 members, but we had somebody slide in that was also posting links to things for sale. And we've had those removed. removed. Also, we have a friend of ours, Alyssa, who is helping kind of monitor that Facebook group and she got those taken care of right away recently. Yeah, all the soliciting and all of that stuff that's not allowed on there. Yeah, and she works really hard to approve the members and she she goes back and makes sure that they look like they're really a quilter and they're really (laughs) a person. But if you are trying to get into that group, the best thing to do is answer the questions. Answer the questions. (laughs) So, and they're simple about quilting and so thanks. Okay, and then I also wanted to give a quick shout out of our subscribers that have recently subscribed ever since we opened that up. And again, this is just for the audio version of the podcast, but really quick. So we have Isabel, and yes, that's my fiance. She was the <laughs> test dummy for the first one, but she's still on here. Um, Rebecca, Sierra, Linda, Tina, Donna, Deb, Linda, and Juliana. So these are all our new monthly subscribers to the audio version of the podcast. We just want to thank you for your support right now. 
that's all you're doing is just supporting us. But like we mentioned down the road for subscribers, and we will obviously announce it if there's additional benefits to subscribing rather than just returning value um, for what you receive, then we will absolutely let you guys know about that. And then also just want to give a shout out to, and there's many more of, of you who did this, so I, I don't have a list of everyone, but I have responded to everyone individually on the YouTube channel who has given us a super thanks on YouTube. So on our last two podcast episodes and even on the block of the month, we had some super thanks. So just want to say thank you here on the podcast, but I always make sure to respond to everyone who's done that. So we really do appreciate the support. It's been going really good since we announced those two uh, ways to support. Yeah. Do you have, um, I, I was just thinking of a couple things we could maybe do for those subscribers right now before we have it, you know, uh, do you have like, their email addresses? Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. perfect. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'll talk that to is, you after the episode. I think <laughs> I have an idea. That is or one, two. one thing that okay. yeah, we can actually send it back uh, okay. more uh, personally okay. too. Okay. Awesome. Great. So, well, as you hear there, maybe there, if you do subscribe, <laughs> my mom has something. <laughs> yeah. Brewing She's in already mind, cooking so. up ideas. <laughs> That's great. Okay. So with that being said and all those little housekeeping things taken care of, I think it's time to jump into our new topic today. And like we already mentioned was we, we showed the up close preview of the fabric with my mom and she did a great job of, of showing all those fabrics and talking about them. But we know that that is just half of the des design team of this fabric <laughs> collection. So Chelsea, why don't you go ahead and give us your thoughts on the new collection and, and um, you know, what went into it. And then you and mom can sort of go back and forth and reveal more to the listeners about it. Reveal all yeah, the things. I just thought of this. Should I go get the cap sets? Would that be helpful? Uh, While no. you talk, or are you okay without them? No, I'm okay, okay without them. Okay. I just really appreciate that mom and Billy filmed this video because I was really sick last week. So I was not feeling well. And it's those days that I am so like extra grateful that we're a team <laughs> yes. because mom can make up for it. And that's really, really nice. So I wasn't able to make it. And I think that's like the first one I haven't been able to make, Yeah, which was really sad. I am so happy with Bountiful Blooms. I can't, I know we say this every time. Oh, it's our favorite collection, but here's the difference with this one. We have talked about, it's the same thing we went through with favorite things. We talked about doing a fall collection. For quite a while. For quite a while. Yeah. And we really wanted it to be right. And so it got brought up a few times and it just didn't feel right. We were still going over colors. How could we make it fall? And and us at the and same us. time. Yeah. Where fall tends to sometimes be a little bit darker, but from where we live and, and even other places, fall isn't always dark. It's just... Really, it's really vibrant colors to me is what fall is. And it's really, you know, those changing colors. But there's mm. also that transition from summer to fall where you get to see everything changing. And that's what we were going for. And I truly think that that's what we got with Bountiful Blooms. And I love all of the colors we have. We just, like, having a peach and an aqua in there <laughs> was so fun to add into a fall collection. Just oh, And the cranberry and the oh, pink. Yeah. I love, love, love. Yeah, too. that dusty rose color yeah. just gave it, like, I, I just am so happy with it. And the other thing is it's really easy on the eyes when you're sewing with it. So it's not too, like, loud. It's so fun to sew with. And I haven't been able... Now that I've started sewing, finally, I haven't been able to stop sewing. And it they just, they photograph beautifully, and it's just a really good group of colors and prints. And something we did really well in this collection is we have so many florals. We have a lot of them. And really good accent basics that just complement it, I think, perfectly. And yeah. I think you'll see in our patterns, I did wonder, one thing I have to mention is I thought to myself, I wonder what what move mom is going to make on the patterns with a fall, a more fall collection. And we didn't come up with anything the same, but we both definitely had elements of fall. But then mom did the flower quilt mm -hmm. and I'm like, voila, she did flowers too. <laughs> I, I thought it worked. I thought it, it fit works. too. Yeah. Totally works. And you want to know what? Where we like in 
it's so hot here that the two times of year that you go buy flowers anyways are spring and fall. Right. And those yeah. flowers do really, really actually well here yeah. during the fall winter months. Yeah, sometimes they last all the yeah. way, mostly through the winter. Yeah, if we don't have a crazy freeze, like a really big yeah. drop in temperature, the flowers will last all the way till spring. Yeah. And, but I just, I'm so happy with this collection and I love our large floral and I love all the colors and I just have been in love with it. Yeah. Those are my thoughts. There's a lot of them. <laughs> I love all the basics too. Like the chunky plaid is just so much fun. And actually, when you do watch the Maple Sky quilt video, I use the plaid as binding for both the large quilt and the mini. And for the mini, I did it straight. But for the large quilt, I did it on the bias. I noticed that. So I was down here it, staring at it. So much fun. And then this little, the the print that looks like it's braided almost, you know, this, I guess it's our stripe. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that is fun on the bias too. I used it on the bias for the Summer Sky 2 quilt and I used it regular on another quilt. I can't remember which one right now, but that was really fun to sew with on the bias. I was actually joking the other day with myself. You guys, I have conversations with myself <laughs> in my sewing room because that print kind of looks like long grain rice to me. Oh, it does. <laughs> I can see that too. I, I feel like it looks like it's... It is a braid. A it braid. is. When, yeah. when I designed it, my idea was a herringbone print. Yes. yes a herringbone. Yes. But I just could... Like when you stare at the fabrics for so long <laughs> and I was sewing for out like hours, you guys, to like three in the morning... <laughs> And I'm like, this kind of looks like wild grain rice. I think I'm, I think I'm really hungry. You probably I think I'll hungry. go get a snack. Those are my conversations when I'm sewing. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, the chunky plaid though I love too because when you do a plaid and you're only doing like you're not doing multiple colors in that plaid, it actually makes that green look a lot lighter. Yeah. And you need that extra shade. Right. I think it adds yeah. something, complements the collection because. The, the actual green is much darker. Yeah. But because the plaid has white lines running through it, it, light, it makes it a lighter color. Yeah. And it's so nice to have like that contrast in your collection. Yeah. And we do that on purpose a lot. We'll have a lot of prints that are just like a lot of white in it with the color to make it kind of brighten. I really, really love that about it. But then we have this little like the it's, little daisies yeah, with the dots. The little yes. daisy prints that has, it's a lighter shade of pink and it's just like a blush color. Yeah. It's so, so fun. Pretty. It's so pretty. I really, really love it. And I love that one in the multi low volume too, with all the, with the gold and the yeah. darker cranberry and the blush. Yeah. Them all. Yeah. We love them we all. We love them all. This larger floral, this flower right here, I don't know if you like, it totally reminds me of the Clover Hollow. It does. Doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And I always love it. It's so quirky and so... Whoa. You can see total Clover Hollow in that. I didn't just even realize in that. Just that one little part. Yeah. And it, and it was so much fun when I was sewing because it just... I love the Clover Hollow collection. Yeah. And it just took me back to that. And I was like, oh, it's kind of like a little nod to yeah. it. Just... Well, Just, and bringing back our spring dots mm -hmm. for the collection. Those originally were in Desert Bloom. Right. And... You can't even find that anymore. So yeah. it's really, really nice to have those yeah. spring dots back. And this is the fun part about designing. We're, we, we have all these collections, and now it's like we can bring elements back right. into newer collections that were from collections super long yeah. ago, it feels like. And even resize them. Yeah, resize yeah. them. Yeah. It's really fun. I just... I love how many florals are this are in this one though. Yeah. Like it's my favorite. You mentioned a couple different collections that there are relatable fabrics to, but is there a full collection that this is comparable to or is this your most unique collection outside of maybe your holiday collections? Yeah, I I feel like this doesn't have a sister collection. Yeah, you're this right. is the first of it. Right. And just for me standing in mom's room and looking at all the fabric yeah. and then that I thought it's the different. same thing too and I don't have yeah. a great eye for it but I was like well that definitely looks different than anything yeah. else I see up there yeah. and I think we've noticed since we designed Balboa we've really been pushing a little bit outside of the zone which has been nice and the collections have felt very different and and still us yeah but 
it's just really fun creatively going to different spaces, I think is what's really nice. We're not always saying sewing with the same colors or the same types of prints and but but I especially love that you look at it and you're like, oh yeah, that's Sherry and Chelsea. Yeah. That's what's really cool because about of the it. designs. Because yeah. of the designs. Yeah. yeah. It just has like a different type of flow, I guess yeah. you could say. But this one, I already know it's gonna have to have a sister collection down the road. Oh yeah. Because it's as so soon as much Billy fun. just said that, I'm like, yeah. oh, the tables are just <laughs> the the mind y- is yeah, turning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mind is turning. <laughs> I, now I need to go design something that is a sister to this. Yes. Which I mean, you—it's so—it's going to be so hard to top this. So we'll just have to make something that complements it because, right. yeah, yeah. Well, that was fun. That was like, uh, yeah, yeah. Was, I'm just really overall happy with it and love it. Yeah. One one other question about it then, because it was different than previous collections. Was there any anxiety or anticipation to the release of this one? I, from at least from the comments from the video that Mom released. I seem like a lot of people did like it. Was it, it is that, is that nervous? Is it nerve wracking to release something brand new that you've never done before? It is a little bit nerve wracking. Yeah. And or were yeah. you confident though, that, that it was going to be well received? Can I go first? <laughs> yes. I was more nervous with favorite things. Oh, were you? I That's was interesting. because Christmas, I feel like is such a big deal. And mm. because we were going for the Christmas vibe, but also you could use it for other things. I was very, very nervous about this one. This one legitimately was a breath of, a breath of fresh air and has just like made me happy. And not that I didn't have anxiety about it or like was worried about what people would think. I did. I always tell mom, I'm like, I hope people like it. And I'm genuine about that. I This is something that we've literally created from scratch and yeah. we want people to love it just as much as we do and not be forced to love it just because it's something we came out with, but because they really, really feel drawn to it. And those comments helped me so much and the feedback is so great and it makes me feel so much better about it. So there was, like I was worried, but I really have enjoyed that. I think that's a testament to it is I enjoy sewing with it. Yeah. Like I really do. What makes me nervous about that? Yeah. You know, Yeah. that I genuinely like it. Yeah. I feel like, cause I feel like we used to do more sneak peeks back yeah. in the day and we haven't really been doing them because we've just been so busy sewing at the end. But I did do a really small sneak peek in my Patreon group like two days before and just kind of where they saw like the Mom! side of the, but I did, but they all loved, like they didn't see any prints. Did they really? They but loved it. They loved it. And so then I was kind of like, okay, Friday's going to be fine. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And, you know, it was just a small group on there that yeah. day that uh, for our Zoom meeting. And, but they, they were so positive that yeah. I, and, and they didn't really get a big view, but. Yeah. But who isn't any, any person who isn't nervous about something that you created and that you want to share with the world or, or yeah. everyone yeah. feels that way about everything. Well, yeah. and th- that was sort of my point. And the question is, that's coming no matter what, I'm yeah. sure, whether and fabric designers, authors, musicians, anyone that right. creates something and then then there's eventual d- day to share it with everyone. There's going to be some anxiety and, and nervousness. However, I was with this fabric line because it was so different. different. There's no sister. Yeah. You've never, like, yeah. um, you had Seashore Drive and Balboa are very yeah. close, they were right? Different Billy, and, I'm so yeah. proud of you. <laughs> okay, so they're, they're different, yeah. but they're similar. So yeah. which one came first? Balboa. Balboa. Okay, so because you knew people appreciated Balboa already, that yeah. had to right. relieve some anxiety from for Seashore. Seashore Drive because you're yeah. like, it's, it is similar. Yes. It's a sister collection. And so you could, I, I would assume that would relieve some of that. But however, this one with having nothing similar to it, it's brand new, so. Right, you're and gonna, totally you, out of the box. Yeah, yeah, from, it, is, yeah. it is, yeah. yeah. So that, that that was where my question stemmed from, is just because it, obviously there's gonna be anxiety for anything new released, but when it's really new, then maybe there's a little added amount of that. Yeah, hearing Billy say sister collection just brings me so much joy. <laughs> just the terms, Billy. <laughs> yeah. I've been around. I've been, I've been around this for a few years now, so it's 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 ingrained. Can you believe it's almost three years? Yeah, I that's know. insane, guys. Yeah. Yep. This summer, yeah, it's, <laughs> we gotta plan wow. something big for the the third anniversary. Yeah, 
episode. should we should have Sean come and sit in for uh, an episode one of these days and just have <laughs> and just and see what because he would everything would be over his head. By oh that yeah, point. totally. And he, would, he would probably laugh at me with, "How do you know so much He'd about?" He'd be sitting yeah. in the corner. Like, How does my what? big brother know fabric? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You'd feel, oh my goodness, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Some comedic. We could film his relief. facial expressions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just thought of something that I should have mentioned at the beginning. Uh, our friend Katie from Count Your Stitches oh. Designs did three little cross stitch designs: one for the flower shop, one for Maple Sky, Maple Sky and one for Happy Spools. Happy Spools. Yeah, and we can even pop up pictures of those. I have. We must. I have pictures of all three. They are so adorable and we have the link to her shop and you can buy them individually in paper or pdf but she also has a little bundle where you can get all three in paper or pdf and if you if you like to do cross stitch along with quilting these are just adorable and they're they're small quick projects and we just really appreciate her for you know, working with our colors and designs. and She is so good at so what she does, creative. you guys. Yeah. So creative. Yeah. And, and also the kindest person yes. ever. Yes. And a military mom with mm -hmm. two sweet kids and also the daughter of Val, who does a lot of our quilting. Yeah. She did that for a quilt last collection yes. too, right? Yeah. Or yeah. a couple collections yeah, ago. Yeah, she did with Favorite Things and also with Seashore Drive. And she did a cross stitch for my block of the month. So That's What right. is so funny is just recently in the past month or so, I've had two friends over in my sewing room. The first thing they notice is Katie's cross stitch that I have oh. is sitting up on the shelves in my sewing room. It's always the first thing people see. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's so cute. And to me, that's just really a testament of like what she does yeah. and how adorable her patterns are. And just, it's so cute. Yes. So <laughs> that shocked me. Both of them, it's the first thing they said when they walked in. Oh, that's and fun. Saw. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay. So the next thing relating to your fabric collection is I thought it might be good to talk about what you guys do when you get brand new fabric. And so imagine that you see, so now you're not the sellers, you're the purchasers, or you know, you're, the, you're, you're the ones in the market for looking for new fabric. You see a new line of fabric, whether it's online or in a catalog, and you instantaneously think, I want that, I need that, I'm gonna go pre-order it, and you do, and you wait, and it comes in the mail, you get it, what do you do with it? And so I put a bunch of questions out there for you to think about, but essentially what what goes into your mind when you get a brand new line of fabric yeah i i thought this i really loved this whole paragraph of questions that you came up with i thought there's so many things to address here but yeah, yeah there was like this was like detailed i was very impressed yeah. when you sent the topics over yeah. like this was i feel like the first thing i'll do whether it's a layer cake or a charm pack or fat quarters is i will just like thumb through it and look at every single print. I just, I want to somehow go and look at all the prints up close. And doth my eyes deceive me, this beautifulness. I, I feel yeah. like photography now online is is pretty good, you know. Oh, it's really so good. So when it, when it arrives, it, it generally meets my expectations from what I had seen digitally or online. Yeah. But yeah, I just want to look at everything first. What about what about you? That's what that's the truth of it though. When you get those fabrics, you just want to admire it for a minute. You mm -hmm. really do. I've never fallen in love with something and then had it ordered it and not still been in love with it. Right. And it's because those are the only ones I buy. It's the ones where I look through the catalog or I see it online and I gasp. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's really cute. Yeah. That is really good. Yeah. And almost instantaneously I actually know what I'm going to do with it actually I, I don't really have to like yeah. think about it but sometimes I love it so much I just let it sit on my shelf because it's so pretty exactly the, you do the same thing yeah. I'll like go look at mom's stash I'm like hmm she just got like six bundles you know I was eyeing like I only picked the one I was obsessed with but all <laughs> of them are so pretty I don't know it's funny because I actually went in my sewing room to look at the bundles that I've re recently purchased over yeah. the past few months. Oh, I have to. Or, or a year. And 
a, a lot of them were fall. So really? that really shows me that we needed bountiful blooms yeah. because I was buying fall collections because we didn't have anything like that so in ours. So true. It's all springy and happy. Very, and- yeah. And then I also, I always, I generally buy nearly every Minnick and Simpson collection just you because do. I love red, white, and blue. But the last bundle that I actually purchased, and I don't know how I missed it when it was released. So I ended up buying it late, but luckily I found a, a fat quarter bundle, was Bon Voyage by Rifle Paper Company. And I don't know what it is, but I, well, I love Rifle Paper, Paper Company. I buy their stationary products all the yeah. time and Christmas cards and things like that. But this is like a travel themed line, of course. And I noticed that too. I buy travel themed <laughs> fabrics every once in a while to make bags or, yeah, usually bags. What are you trying to tell us, mom? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, do you need a vacation? So maybe I do. <laughs> But this was interesting too. Billy has a question on here. Will you buy a pattern from the designer? Usually, if I buy a pattern from another designer, I want to use our fabric with it. Is that yep. so crazy? I was just about to bring that up. But if I buy their fabric, I'm generally, unless it's a bag, I'm generally going to use our pattern. Yep. Is that so? Yep. Yeah. So that is so funny. If and I buy I... their pattern, it's our fabric. If I buy their fabric, it's our pattern. Yep. Yeah. Because I, and I don't know why that is. When yeah. I read that question, I thought the same thing. Oh, that's interesting. Ex- the exact yeah. same thing. That's always what I do. What, yeah. you know, it's, I don't know why we do that. Yeah. Or else I want it scrappy. That's, that's the yeah, other yeah. option. I might want to do scraps. Yeah. And you could mix and match. I like that Billy had this on there. Yeah. Like with, would you mix it with one of your collections? I absolutely would do that. Yeah. And I have done that several times. Yeah. So yeah, we just filmed that video with the Moda Mix and Match with Corey's Sun Sun Wash and our Simply Delightful. And they really do go together beautifully. And then- That's what made me think of that question was the video. Yeah, and a lot of people have said, oh, I'm using both of those for this project or that project. And that was really fun. But but yeah, if if I buy somebody else's fabric, I generally have one of my designs in mind for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought this was this was a good. I do need. I feel like we have a little break here for a couple months. Maybe I really need to sew with. Do we though? Work on, do we? I don't know. I'm thinking because we I'm have so- at least a month before we get more fabric. Do you think? Well, I started designing quilts last night. Oh, for I've the new started. collection. I've already got five designs. Yeah, but I think I'm going to design ten because. Well, yeah, for this one, I think I'm going to design yeah. a lot more and yeah. then narrow it and down. Then narrow it just down because. Well, yeah. w- was Bountiful Blooms the third collection that was approved in 2022, or? Yes, it was approved in 2020. It was approved uh, in yeah, 2020. I guess it must have had to be. Yeah. So, because I know, or last yeah, last year you had three. Actually, the next released. one was approved in 2022. All oh, three of them were. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'm a little backwards here because it was 2022 that you actually had three fabric collections come out, right? Yes. Okay. Favorite things, Bountiful Blooms. And- no, favorite things, Simply Delightful. And then. Going back to oh, yeah. Emma, um, guys, all three of right. those collections. Okay. I'm so confused. I was, I'm asking yeah. just because I'm like, is 2023 gonna be able to slow down a little bit for you? Oh, I yeah. think that's what you guys are basically just talking I, about. I think but. so. Yeah. Se- semi. Once I get done with these quilts, and you, oh. as of now, only one more fabric collection will be released this year. This, this year. year. Okay. Yes. And I'm so excited that's about that. Yeah, and it will be in at. July. And it will be in July. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, then maybe, maybe you guys. We'll have a little more time. It's so <laughs> yeah. interesting to me. It we were really busy yeah. the past six to nine months. Well, like, because we had two collections release exactly two months and two weeks apart. Yeah. So that's really well, December, January. Yeah, two months and two weeks. Yeah. So that that's close. It was a it was a little crazy. Yeah. A lot of fabric. Yeah. yeah. Coming. A lot of fabric to where I was trying to find room anywhere in my house to fit it because... And it, uh, well, and the interesting thing, it was two 
dream come true collections. Oh, yeah. So it was just it, phenomenal. We were so happy and so yeah. we're, we still are so yeah. happy and excited. It, it, Yeah, just a lot of sewing and a lot yeah. of things going on. So, But I feel like I have about, you know, four to six weeks right now where I can maybe work on works in progress or make something I've been wanting to make before yeah. I'll be sewing. With, yeah, and I feel yeah. that too. It's not dire that all of these things are done in the next right. two weeks, which is really, really nice. Right. Like I don't even have, yeah, we do have a little bit of a time period yeah. that we can kind of chill and not rush ourselves, which right. is nice. But let me tell you, I learned from this past fall, and I still have quite the regimen in my planner right now because I need it. So, yeah, it's still busy. Yeah, it is still busy. And my son just started Coach Pitch. It never ends. Let me just tell you. <laughs> well, this is what's funny. Stacy Sue just came out with her cute little sports collection. Yes, like, that's so cute. It's so cute. And she, in her description on her Instagram post, she talked about how she was shocked by the amount of hours she put into her kids' sports yeah. this season. And I commented, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I am right there with you. Like, this was the first time we did multiple sports in one school year. Yeah. And it just had, doesn't end. Well, and you had two girls playing sports at the same yeah. time. You've never had that before. Yeah. We had soccer and flag football and then two girls playing basketball. Right. And now coach pitch. And it's like a lot. Mm -hmm. So, so she came up with the sports Sports fabric. collection, yeah, it's very uh, novelty, right. like so cute. Baseball bats and basketballs, and it reminded me of something mom would have bought for you kid, and yeah. ma made a pillowcase for you out of it, you know. And yeah. that's well, Sean had that. He sport. did. His quilt yes. was had all those little sports. Thing. It was like a yeah. Debbie Mum fabric collection from the nineties. Oh my goodness! Or, or maybe early two thousands. Well, it was a long time yeah. ago, and I remember I still have that. that. Quilt. Yeah. And so as soon as I thought, that's honestly what I was thinking. I'm like, wow, this is really nostalgic for me because yes. <laughs> this is like what my mom would have bought for my brothers or right. whatever. Yeah. So, but well, yeah. And then it's funny because then she mentions she's going to all the sporting events with her kids. Well, then that obviously transitioned into her fabric design. Yeah, it does. Around you know, so many sports and the right? thinks about, hey, I should make a fabric collection. You do. Yeah. And she is known for doing a lot of novelty collections anyways. Yes. It was perfect for her. Like, yeah. But yeah, my husband is coaching too, which means I'm also helping. So he had his first practice yesterday. It's really cute. <laughs> Very fun. cute. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, okay. anything else that you guys want to cover today with new fabric or your fabric or anything? Yeah. No, I think I love that. I will say one more thing. Obviously, there are certain prints when I look through a catalog where I know I'm buying a bolt of it. I just wanted to mention that too. Oh, good point. It, it's, yes. It, if you really like it that much and I know, oh, that's a backing or I'm going to be using that for bindings or whatever, just buy it because you won't regret buying that bolt of something you love. And yeah. I just used something the other day and I was so glad I ripped open the bolt and I'm like, oh, thank goodness I had this for a backing. Right. You know, and it was really, really helpful. I just had it on hand right when I needed it and yeah. didn't say, oh, darn, I didn't buy that when I should have, you know. Right. So I just wanted to mention that real quick yeah. because I think that's important to know as well. That's a good point. I actually bought a print of Camille Ross Kelly's I bought a bolt to use as a backing for a Minikin Simpson quilt because it seemed to have yes. the reds and the blues. And I thought, oh, this will be really fun to kind of do for the backing for the next Minikin Simpson quilt. Oh, yeah. Quilt was that, that her Nantucket collection? So uh, it w it, maybe it was the one before, because Nantucket was all blues. It was, it was the yeah. one that had. Maybe it was Dwell. Oh, it might have been Dwell. That had some red. Both really in it. great collections, so, let me yeah. tell you. But but I and and when I got it, it it's really gonna work. It's gonna be yeah. fun. That's awesome. Yeah. You just mixed and matched Mom, I mixed two and matched. different Moda collections <laughs> than yours. So yeah. No, I thought these were great topics today. And yeah. I thought Billy, I was actually really impressed with how in depth you went with this one. Yeah. With all of your questions. Yeah. Oh. So yes, and our next episode will air on Monday, March 27th, 2023. 
And that is my anniversary, you guys. Oh, wow, well, oh, we is. got your daughter's birthday yes. and your anniversary wow. in what the same. What is happening? Wow. Back to back episodes. Podcast for Harper's birthday. Wow. Anniversary for the next one. Yeah. And, ah. Awesome. And it'll be your quilts. And it'll, it'll your be your quilts. quilts. What? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be mine. Yeah. And, and it's my favorite number of years that we've been married. 13 oh. years. Oh, okay. 13 is my favorite number. Oh, you know, really? my friend okay. Cindy, that's her favorite number, too. Is it really? Yeah. I'll tell you a cute story, so, guys. So you must believe it's lucky, not unlucky. I do, actually. Yeah, okay. all right. 100% I do. It was my basketball jersey number, and actually the cute reason why I chose it is because 13 was Billy's basketball jersey number, and I wanted to be really cool like him, so. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, he's he's blushing right now, so. <laughs> But I don't know. I just really love the number 13. Yeah. Cindy does too. Her birthday's on the 13th of the month. Harper's too, so. birthday. Yeah. And that's when Harper was born. She was like, you have somebody yeah. on the 13th. <laughs> yes. 13 is a good number, people. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. So yes. Next podcast episode airs Monday, March 27th. And we hope to see you there. And thank you for joining in on our podcast and all the fun topics today. Thanks so much for stopping by. Bye.